inside this form, right? So this form starts here and ends there. So all these things are within this form. So when I click the button, submit button in this form, the controller is going to go uh, to this form tag element and it's going to see what the action is, right? So it sees that the action is validated serve. So that means that when I click on submit, the control is going to go to the validate serve servlet. Okay, so it's going to match this validate serve in the URL pattern and invoke the corresponding servlet. And the type of method which is going to be sent to that validate servlet is nothing but get. Okay, so right now we we don't want to uh, concentrate much on this part because like we just want to display the login servlet for for our first uh, servlet page. Right. So this login servlet. Uh, class is pretty much similar to what we have seen in our hello world example right so nothing uh, more than that uh, in this uh, login servlet okay so let's see how do you run this servlet on the server so but one thing uh, we've seen that uh, in order to run your servlets in a web application you need to have a web.xml configuration file so that the web container can match the incoming URL pattern with the URL with the existing servlet and uh, then invoke the uh, servlet which which is going to serve um, the client request right but we haven't yet written anything in the web.xml we haven't even created a web.xml file but as I told you the ID itself is going to do a lot of things for you in the background so the ID has created a web.xml file for you so let's have a look at it and if you go to web inf you see this file of product symbol which the id has created for you and here you have this servlet element and the servlet class is com.shellbalepu.servlets.loginserve which is the servlet which we created and it is given a servlet name of login serve and the corresponding servlet mapping element for this which has a url pattern of login serve right so you also have this uh, welcome file list here so what does it mean so if uh, the client had not sent a specific request or if, if the request sent by a client did not match to a specific U URL pattern in the web.xml uh, what is going to be done is it's uh, the container is going to call the Files which are present in the uh, welcome file list. So if, if, if it doesn't match, I simply give shellbalepu.com without matching any specific URL pattern. It's it, it's going to see if I've got a index.html page in my web application, and if if there is an index.html page, it's going to pick up that page and load that page. Right? And if I don't have an index.html page, it's going to check for index.htm. So similarly, all the files in this welcome file list is going to be. Uh, checked on and displayed as a default file for the web application. Right. Okay, so we've got our servlets, we've got a web.xml file, so we are ready to go now. But one thing we need is a server, right? So let's go ahead and create a servlet. So file, new, and I'll say other. What I need is a server. So I'll click on server, click on next. So we already have our Tomcat server. Right. So I select the Tomcat server 6 and move my servlets project to configure projects right? and click on finish. So the first time it's actually going to ask you uh, for your uh, mapping of your Tomcat server. So you need to give the path where you install your Tomcat server. So it's, it's going to map uh, automatically. So here if you expand the servers you'll see that you've got a uh, Tomcat server there in, in there already. Right. So what I'll do is uh, right click on login serve, run as and I'll say run on server and I'll select Tomcat 6.0 server, click on next, let, let, leave the defaults and click on finish. So now my server is starting and it has displayed the login screen. Uh, let's uh, change this to, I say my web browser is Internet Explorer. Okay. And uh, 
simply run this servlet again simply say finish so now it has opened the entire explorer page for me and where my servlet code will be displayed the HTML code will be displayed so here it is we've given a username label with a username text box password label with a password text box and a login button right so I can type anything in this username screen with a max length of 10 I can type anything in the password screen it's not going to show the password max length of 10 right so this is our very simple login servlet uh, which is pretty similar to our hello world example right uh, we just displayed something on the screen on our hello world example okay so now comes the next part which is going to be interesting okay so if you see have a look at the console you will see the order in which the methods were called so first the constructor was called followed by the init method followed by the service then do get and service and do get again because we invoke this um, class the, the servlet from two places right first I, I did it in the local then and again I said I want to change it to Internet Explorer and I ran it on Internet Explorer so that's that's the reasons so you you can see that the init method was called only once but for the first time when I ran it from my local uh, ID instance I got uh, it went to the service and then to get and the second time when I ran it on uh, Explorer Internet Explorer it didn't again do the whole thing of calling the constructor and then init method is simply call the service and do get method right okay so what happens now when the user clicks on submit so when the user clicks on submit the server is going to check what action you have for that form right so i see the action is validate sir so that means the web server should invoke this servlet called validate serve and what is the type of method it's going to pass to that method I'm sorry what is the type of method is going to pass to that servlet type of method it's going to pass is of get right and what are the form parameters we've seen that uh, in a request the client sends to the server the type of method it sends the URL and it also sends the form parameters right so the type of method is get here and the URL is validate serve which will be matched in the web.xml with the URL pattern and what is the form parameter form parameter is nothing but the username and password so whenever whatever text boxes which we have in our uh, page in our form and if you enter any value and navigate from that page to another page all those values entered into the text boxes are going to go as part of the form parameters to the server right so since the validate servlet validate serve servlet is called let's add create the servlet right so I'll say new other go to web servlet and I'll say servlet name is validate serve right select the defaults and I'm simply going to copy my code for validate serve okay so here again you've got the imports you've got constructor and do get do post right so since the type of request was get I put all my implementation in the do get method right so what I, what did I do in this uh, do get method so we've seen that uh, the username and password is going to be sent as a form parameter right but how do you get the value from that form parameter in your servlet so you simply say request or get parameter and you give the parameter name to get the value of that parameter so if you see that the username input tag element there is the name is username so in order to get the value of this text box I have to say request get parameter username and similarly for password as well I've got the name as password here so I'll simply say request get parameter password right so I get the value of the username and password entered by the user on that screen 
and I simply print out the username and password which was entered by the user. Here I'm going to do some validation. I'm going to check whether the username and password entered by the user were correct or not. Right? And I'm simply using a static validation here wherein I'm uh, checking if the username is user1 and the password value entered by the user is pass1. So if the username entered was user1 and the password entered was pass1, I'm going to send the request to success servlet. Else, I'm going to send the request to the failure servlet. So if you notice here, you see something different. How am I passing the request to success or servlet or failure servlets? So I am using request dispatcher to pass on the request to the success servlet. So we've seen that in the example tutorials earlier that there are two ways in which you can do uh, you can pass a request to another servlet. So one is request dispatcher, the other is send redirect. So we've also learned that uh, you generally use send redirect when you want to um, send a request to a servlet which lies outside your web application. But uh, we, we are still using this in, in this scenario just so that um, you can see how this really works, right? Okay. So I create request dispatcher instance if you see request dispatcher is in the java x servlet um, package i say request dot get request dispatcher success serve so this is going to match the url pattern in web products and for success serve and i say request dispatcher dot forward and i pass in the request and response to that servlet so one thing to note here is when you do a request dispatcher you can send the request and response object to the servlet to which you are passing the request to but in the same case, when you are going with send redirect, you will not be able to pass the request which was passed by the client to the servlet which you are passing the response to. Right. So this is one major difference between this. You won't have the request attributes uh, when you're doing a send redirect. Okay. So these are the two different ways which we have uh, seen in the tutorials earlier. And uh, this is how you, are, you use a request dispatcher or send redirect. And we'll see how it really works, right? So here I'm simply doing uh, validating the request, login uh, username and password sent by the user, and forwarding the request to success servlet or failure servlet based on the type of request. I'm sorry, based on the login uh, validate validated result if it was valid or not, right? So now I need to create a success servlet and a failure servlet. So I'll say right click new other servlets and success serve. Okay, created a success servlet.